In this lesson, we'll explore the use of the shell modifier to add thickness to our 3D models. All right, now typically, the way that we build models in 3D is by creating the outer surface, in this case, the outer surface of this helmet. But in the real world, everything has at least a little bit of thickness to it. Okay, even things like curtains or a piece of paper are going to have a certain amount of thickness. If we were to go ahead and render this, it would look unnatural to have this very sharp line here. We want to have a little bit of geometry either on the outside or the inside of this to show the thickness of this helmet uh, for that light to kind of catch along these edges. So how can we add this thickness to the surfaces that we create here in 3ds Max? Well, one way that we can do that is to use the shell modifier. So we'll go into the modify panel and we're going to add a new modifier to the top of the stack here and we're going to go down and add a shell modifier. So go ahead and pop that on and right away you can see that there's been some thickness added here. Now let's take a look at some of the parameters. Now right now, the, uh, the first two parameters here you can see are inner amount and outer amount. Right now we have nothing set for the inner amount and we have an inch on the outer amount. So we can dial that up. So you can see that that is creating thickness from the surface out. Okay, so the back part of this is our original surface. So if we wanted to create uh, sort of a form-fitting piece of armor to go on a body part or if we're using existing geometry and we want something to exist outside of that geometry, we can use our outer amount. And we can also inset this a little bit by using the inner amount. So if we take this inner amount, you can see now we've got a little bit of shell, a little bit of new geometry on this side of our original uh, piece and also on this side. So if you set this to kind of the same amount, you can get an equal distribution of the geometry on either side of our original piece of geometry. So I'll go ahead and set that back down to zero. Okay, so we can change not only the amount of the thickness here, and you can see how that changes all the way around. We can also add segments. So for instance, if we want to uh, smooth this later on and we want to go ahead and put some segments along this edge here, we can bump up the number of segments there. You can see that. Okay. We can also change, uh, bevel the edges. So these new interior edges here. So if we click on this bevel edge, we need to now select some sort of a spline. And we've got one defined here that just looks like this. And so now if I pick this spline, just hitting this button, going over and picking the spline, we can now see, if I you know, turn off edged faces, that this has created a bevel along that interior edge shaped like this spline that we have here. Okay? So you just want to check this and you want to choose the spline under bevel spline. And then if you want to, you could come back in here and modify some of these points. Okay? And you can see that's kind of changing the profile of that bevel in there. So it's a, a really quick way of getting some interesting effects along the edges that we have defined here with our shell. Okay, let's go back and, and select our shell. We've also got options for overriding the inner material ID. So if you don't want the uh, material ID for the original piece to carry over into your new geometry, you can choose to override that uh, inner material ID, which is are going to be the inner faces the inner polygons, and you can choose your own material ID for that. We've also got the option for the outer polygons, and we've also got the option for the edge polygons. So if you want the edges to have a different material ID, you can override that and choose whatever material ID you like. Okay. You've also got auto smoothing along the edges. Okay. If you turn that off, you can override the edge smoothing group and add it to its own uh, smoothing group, which you can specify there. And we've also got options for uh, UV mapping the uh, the edges, so these new faces along the edges. Okay, we can copy from the uh, edges, the original edges that were there. We can choose none. We can also lay those out in a strip and interpolate those between. Okay, you can also choose to uh, pass a selection up through the stack. So if we want to select the uh, inner faces, we can choose that. Let me turn on the edge faces here. Okay, so you can see that that's passing that selection up and in the case that you need a, uh, a specific selection for something higher up in the stack, you can have that pass those through. Okay, all right. That is a kind of a quick overview of adding our shell modifier. You can see that if I go back up here after making those settings, I can continue to change this amount to change the thickness of this. Right now I'm just doing an outer amount, so I can change that down. You can see the spline that we've created is still uh, beveling that edge appropriately. 
So you can see the kind of the miniature version of the shape of that spline that we've got there. Okay, you can go back and change the points on that spline if you want to. And that just gives this a much more much more heft. It gives it much more realistic look when you have thickness along this uh, along this surface here. And like I said, you probably want to add thickness to most things, even if you think they're going to be very, very thin. Um, if you're going to be able to see that edge at all, you're going to want to have a little bit of a hit off that. And so you want to add just a little bit of thickness. And adding a shell modifier uh, will give you a lot of flexibility in doing that.